real honest reviews. Really, this stuff is really awesome. Throw this in the garbage. Oh, super versatile and one of my favorite trucks of all time. Just in case you're wondering, I am driving pretty badly on purpose. Yeah, it just bends in half. It's, it's garbage. Wouldn't you trust this face? Welcome back everyone to another episode of Real Honest Reviews. Today's Real Honest Review is of the Axial Yeti. Dun dun dun! Ready to run rock racer made by Axial. It's basically Axial's answer to the Rexos that everybody's been making. It's got an Exo independent front suspension and a Wraith rear axle on it. Um, we already did the unboxing video and showed you a little bit of it out of the box and I talked about some of the issues that I thought it was going to have. The suspension on this thing is pretty great, so we'll show you a few drop tests on the concrete. So, if we're jumping it, it is bottoming out on its own power. Coming off crooked. I love the way that, this, that the suspension works. If I was jumping it, I mean, I'd really be coming down on it. See, watch it squat when we get it. The back end just really squats. So it's not, it's, it's important to know it's not a censored brushless system. It is sensorless, so there's a little bit of cog there. Seems like it's got enough giddy up. Let's uh, run it up and down the street a little bit. The top speed's not great on T-cell. Oh. <laughs> Big tires want to roll under. We are on pavement, not dirt. We made for dirt. That's top speed right there. <laughs> nice. Levels out good. Oh, that was awesome. You went halfway up the tree. <laughs> Tires have good grip. Ow! <laughs> it sits a little lower than some of the other trucks. Oh, that scarred bad. the plastic right there. Oops. Would have thought the front wheels would have hit first. Nope. So I haven't broke it driving it up the tree, but I can see when it lands that it's flexing the rear axle. It's just your AR60 Wraith axle in there. So um, I can tell that beef tubes are gonna be in order. If you really wanna beat on it, you're gonna need beef tubes and aluminum lockouts. And I can see these rear arms, see how much they flex. They're just plastic. So maybe some Blue Monkey or STRC, something like that. Arms, front arms will need some RPM on them. Um, but straight out of the box, it's going to be pretty fun, and we're just going to drive it till it breaks, basically, and then we'll replace parts after that. Should we put three cell in it and see what happens? <laughs> <laughs> Cartwheel! <laughs> that was awesome. Oh! Apparently a bird feeder is all it took. <laughs> I have had the opportunity to beat on it and bash on it a little bit and now we're going to look at what's wrong with it. In real honest review style. So, right off the bat, I only ran this for about five minutes and I had broken the trailing arm setup. I have since custom made my own trailing arm setup out of some all thread and brake lines so that I could keep on testing it. 
but just like I thought, these trailing arms were weak out of the box and it broke. Also, you'll notice I'm missing a wheel. This uses the um, it uses the wheels that came on the Poison Spider Wraith and it's using the hubs that first showed up on Axial's XR10 and they're a pin hub. I happen to have one here. They look like this. They have six bolts on them so the wheel bolts in and the pin goes into the back of it like that. Uh, they create a pretty good extension. Um, that's like a half inch, almost three quarters of an inch extension on there. The problem is, is this little area where the pin goes is not strong at all. What happened is under speed and under load, it is a brushless truck. You'll notice that there is no more spot for a pin. Wore it right out. The pin cut through that cheap soft plastic and just twisted it right off. Cut it like it was a cheese cutter. Also, the beadlock wheels while they probably would hold up on rock crawling, you'll notice they didn't hold up very good to high speed stuff. Uh, it ripped the tire right out of the bead on there. The tires are pretty good. Uh, since I'm talking about tires, we'll talk about them. These tires are pretty good. They grip good. They got a good bite. They got a good open lug. Does good in the mud, good in the dirt. Uh, seems to be sticky enough. So as far as the tires go, tires aren't bad. Foams are a little bit soft, but um, that seems to be okay because the tire is stiffer. It's not a straight up rock crawling tire, so it's not like super soft and flimsy. It's a good off-road tire all around. These are the uh, BF Goodrich uh, Crawler TAs, and I think these were also on the Poison Spider Wraith. They're a pretty decent tire. I like the way that they hooked up in grass. They hooked up good on pavement, hooked up good in the dirt. So for a rock racer, the tires are pretty decent for a ready to run tire out of that. However, the cheap plastic can't hold up. So, um, let's get the body off of it. We already kind of showed that in our unboxing video. One of the really nice features of the Yeti that the EXO was missing is the fact that the cage comes off. Anybody who had the uh, Axial EXO, it was super fast, was a lot of fun, but the, um, the cage didn't come off without a lot of screws and a lot of hassle and a lot of pain. It was a pain to work on. So this one uses a really nifty, there's like a hinge here that comes around, makes a loop. I don't know if you can see that but you put a pin in it and now it's hinged, take the pin out and the whole cage comes off. That's super sweet. Good job on that one. The helmets in here on the bodies, they're removable. They basically reuse the Axial Deadbolt uh, helmet guys. So it comes with uh, three different helmets that you can change out. Exo rear light setup, so you can put lights on there. Bunch of light pods that can mount to the roof to the front, that kind of thing to give you lights if you ever want to run this thing in the dark. So the, the body has got no, no support holding it on in the rear. This little flimsy piece comes around. The only thing that holds it on are these little exhaust port looking things. So of course that broke the first time I rolled it. There's not much there to hold that in and that broke right away. The body is kind of cool looking it's really, really wide though, compared to, compared to like a Wraith or something. This is really, really a wide, wide cage. The cage is eight inches wide on there. So it kind of is like a frog when you go to drive it, you know. Battery mount placement on this is actually really cool. Battery straps right behind the motor and it's got an adjustable battery mount depending on how big your batteries are you move this strap, there's an X strap right here with four screws, moves up and down. The screws have notches so that it can't slide. That's pretty cool. And then your battery, there's a pin and they put a little gripper on the pin. I like the little grippers. That's a good idea. This little door opens up. Let me try to show you. Little door opens up, battery pack just slides out. So that works really, really well. 
It's a sweet idea as far as that. Puts the battery towards the back a little bit, kind of helps to center, uh, center it out a little bit. It does ride a little bit higher, but it's a better battery setup than, say, the uh, Twin Hammers was where it was way back here in the tail. So the battery tray, pretty cool on there. This rear cage area really seems to be strong enough. It flexes a little bit, but I mean, you're kind of going to want that to flex some as far as that goes. You're not going to want that to be real rigid or it's going to bend if you take a hard tumble. The tub itself, the tub is done really well. It's got some flex and give to it. Um, but it's it's got enough um, there's little ridges down inside here so it's got enough enough ridges and strength in it that it's not going to just break in half on you it does fully come apart which is nice several screws take this bat wing thing off the top so you can get to your bell cranks for your steering and everything like that um, so that part good design I've not really looked much at an EXO before so I don't know how much of this is exactly EXO I know basically the front diff and front arms and shock mounts are all XO, uh, so those are replaceable. So far, the front of this thing has been fine. This part is pretty tough, even with the plastic steering drag links and, uh, and upper links that I thought might bend and break. That's been no problem whatsoever. Most of my issue that I've had with this has cycled around the rear, this AR60 axle. This is off of a Wraith, which I know they called the Wraith a rock racer, um, but it really, it's not strong enough for high speed brushless stuff. So of course, if you're gonna race this, it needs upgraded. This, this plastic, every time I jump it, you can see it flexing. The front wheels don't have a very wide spacer hub behind it, but the back wheels, in order to make them as wide as the front was, they put those real big spacers on there and of course that just makes everything that just it's leverage on it you know and it's making it weak and dangerous so some different hubs on there some vanquish maybe i can get speedwagon to machine me some custom some custom hubs for that and change out the you know change out those wheels or change out that thing back there the um the trailing arm with stabilizer bar setup I really like that suspension. It's got a lot of travel to it, really stable. Uh, the only thing is, is those trailing arms were weak. The plastic, the plastic just was not strong enough. It was hollow the whole way through. So here's the trailing arm that I broke. It's, there's a lot of hollowness in there and they tried to make like a honeycomb thing, but it's just weak. You can see I bent, I bent it at the honeycomb and then this end is, it's just, weak it ripped right apart this ends all bent so it just did not hold up the whole thing uh, you can look here it is yeah just bends in half it's it's garbage that part of it right there that your whole rear suspension hinges upon is weak look at it it, it just bends it flexes there it just Come on, really? That's the whole rear of the truck. The whole rear axle rides on that. And it's that weak and flexible and flimsy. That's just kind of poor to me. Uh, they definitely could have done that better. Much better. Like, they didn't have to cheap out on that part. So overall review of the Yeti, uh, it's a lot of fun. I don't know that it's worth the $429 price tag that it comes stuck with. Just because you're going to spend a couple hundred bucks right out of the box upgrading things like these wheel hubs, uh, some you know some different wheel hubs or some different wheels on there. Uh, you, there's trailing arms like the the Blue Monkey makes trailing arms for them, but they're like 60 bucks for a set of aluminum trailing arms. So you're gonna you're gonna get hit with that right off the bat. Um, you're probably going to strip out some gears in the transmission. I think I've heard of some other people already saying that the gears are stripped in the transmission. It's just that motor mount flexes a lot. The gears just don't really, they don't have a chance when there's a plastic motor mount in there. Uh, other than that, I mean, out of the box, if you want to do some rock racing, bashing around in the desert, something like that, pretty sweet little truck out of the box for that kind of thing. 
I just wouldn't bash as hard on it as I did on this one. Um, it just didn't it didn't hold up to the to some hardcore bashing. I mean, I've taken a tracks of slash and really beat on it and had nothing break. This thing just I didn't even think I was really beating on it that hard. A little bit of like trying to do some hill climbs with the gravel pit, you know, that kind of thing and and it and it just didn't really I don't know. The, I, I just felt like the trailing arms were really cheap. So wait. my suggestion would be wait for the kit where they put some more of these parts in aluminum. If they make these rear end parts in aluminum, uh, then all you got to do is get a better hub, better rear, rear wheel hub, and I think it'd be fine. Really not a bad truck as far as that goes. So, you know, if you can get a good deal on one, uh, might be worth it to pick it up and immediately change out those trailing arms to an aftermarket trailing arm. Uh, you know, that'd probably be fine as well. And I don't know what they're going to do about that motor mount. Hopefully somebody makes an aftermarket motor mount for that that doesn't flex like crazy under there uh, so that it doesn't strip up the gears. But, you know, I'm going to put it back together and I'm going to play with it some more. Uh, but I wanted to show you... You know, when I do a review, you all know I beat the crap out of stuff, drive it like an idiot because I want to know how it's going to hold up if a noob buys it or something like that. Uh, so as far as this goes, probably not a good purchase for a noob. Uh, it's going to break, most likely. It'll break and then you'll have a lot of people out there hating it. Um, so, yeah. That's my real honest review on the Axial Yeti. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, continue watching the show. Thanks for all your support.